They were once home to giant industries, fueling the American dream. Changing times brought changing fortunes. But now, as Lee Cowan explains, these towns are hot spots once again. Bethlehem Steel. It casts a long shadow over Pennsylvania's Lehigh Valley. Those are the blast furnaces. They remain, even though they went silent more than 20 years ago. When the mill closed, it took a big chunk of the region's high-paying blue-collar jobs with it. And the news at the time made it sound very final. The mill workers call this making metal, and they've been making metal this way here in the valley for almost 150 years. No more. But back then, no one envisioned e-commerce. The demand for next or even same day delivery has dumped huge challenges on the steps of brick and mortar stores, but it has also created a demand at these huge job hungry distribution centers. When people get on their iPhone and they order every imaginable product to show up at their doorstep, it's not being brought there by magic. It takes, quite frankly, an army of people to do that. Today, there are almost as many warehouse jobs in the region as there are manufacturing positions. That's a big milestone, says Don Cunningham, president and chief executive of the Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation. From a purely economic standpoint, for high school diploma or less workers, it's created something that, quite frankly, hasn't existed in this area since the days of cement mills and slate quarries mm -hmm. and steel mills. Nationwide, Amazon alone has added more than 500,000 jobs just since 2020, making it the country's second largest private employer, just behind Walmart. Most e-commerce warehouses also offer benefits and wages pushing 20 bucks an hour which effectively makes that the minimum wage, at least around here. We say anybody that wants a job, there is a job for you in that sector. That said, Susan Larkin, vice president of Allied Personnel Services, warns that while the money may be good, warehouse work can also be pretty grueling. They look for warehouse athletes. That's a term, warehouse athletes? That's a term, that they consider their employees warehouse athletes. So you know going into that role, it's gonna be a physical job. Long hours with often rigid quotas make for a pretty high turnover rate in these jobs. But shortening supply chains is now the name of the game, with nearly all retailers competing for warehouse space all over the country to fuel their own online sales. This is population density across the U.S. I'm going to layer on distribution centers over 250,000 square feet. Gosh, it's everywhere, isn't it? When you break it down by market, you can see places like Dallas, Inland Empire in Southern California, Chicago and Atlanta. We're seeing record spending. Adrian Ponson analyzes industrial Almost real estate for a company called CoStar. He says all told, nearly 2 billion square feet of new warehouse space has been built in this country in the last five years. That's equivalent to about 33,000 football fields worth of distribution centers. A recent Amazon facility that was built on the site of a former GM assembly plant in Wilmington, Delaware, is the largest commercial structure that's ever been built in Delaware. We're at an inflection point and we're fighting back. Back in the Lehigh Valley, County Executive Lamont McClure met us in the middle of what he fears is now in jeopardy, the region's rural character. We admire the folks who are working hard in these warehouses. And we don't want their jobs to go away. What we're saying is we don't need any more. You're done. We're done. He knows he can't match the deep pockets of a UPS or a Target, both of which have a pretty big footprint here. But he's still trying. He spent $12 million of the county's money in the last four years buying up parcels of farmland in order to preserve them from warehouse development. And in the process, he hopes, help clean up the air. Too. It's dangerous and it's scary, and our folks have just had enough of the truck traffic. And uh, noise. Yes. Our, there's a lot of air pollution in the Lehigh Valley. This is Main Street, a two lane road through historic downtown Bethlehem. Trucks often use it to get to the nearby highway. That spike right there was just from that big white 18 wheeler that just passed. Brina Holland is an associate professor at Lehigh University who's been measuring the amount of black carbon particles in the exhaust from passing trucks. 
here she says it's particularly concentrated. What we're trying to do is measure lung level episodic exposure. So what people are exposed to on the street. Just walking by. When, they're, when the trucks are driving by. Still, with all that increase in traffic, does come an increase in jobs. The Lehigh Valley is one of the few Rust Belt areas to have actually grown instead of dwindled. For Don Cunningham, that's a win. But this area knows perhaps better than anywhere that even the best booms generally have a bust. Life is an evolution and economies are an evolution. And I think anybody who builds an economy thinking it's gonna be that way forever is a bit foolish. Things are always changing.